scenes. If you remember, the way you warp in previous versions of Live is that the warp markers are attached to the beat time ruler. They're attached to time. The waveform never moves, and you drag points in time around on the waveform. And everybody's kind of used to this, but if you step back and think about it for a second, it actually makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> it's completely incomprehensible, because t it's like you're moving through time or something. Like The distance between beat 2 and beat 3 at 92 beats per minute is not ever going to change. What changes is the audio, and so that's now the way we do it. So the timeline is now fixed. Warp markers are attached to the waveform, and you can drag them around. And actually, it's funny. Like I see this happen over and over again on the beta testing forum. There's all these old, experienced users who show up on the forum, and I did this too when, the, when we first had this. I was like totally complaining to our specification team. I'm like, this makes no sense. I have no idea how this works. And then if you use it for about five minutes, you're like, oh, right, of course. That's because it reflects reality now. You, know, you, you're gener you put events on the audio, and then the waveform moves to match. Let's put this one back to the beginning. So you can actually see what you're hearing now, which I think is pretty great. Um, at a lower level, there's now a kind of sub-warp marker. So the warp markers look basically the same, these big yellow spots. But you see, as I'm mousing over this gray area, I'm getting these little gray markers. These are what we're calling pseudo-warp markers. And you can see these little tiny gray ticks here. These are actually, if I zoom in, you, they, they turn into little arrows. You can see they line up pretty well with the actual events in the audio. These are analyzed transients. So when you first load a, an audio file, Live will automatically look through it and figure out where note onsets and transients are. And it's pretty smart. It's not just based on like sharp rhythmic transients. It can also tell the difference between you know, a violin note moving from a C to a D, legato. So even if there isn't a sharp attack, it, it, it's smart enough to know the difference in pitch and it will assign a transient handle there. So technically, they're not really transients. We're calling them, we're calling them transients, but they're, it's basically any onset change between two audio events. It'll place these marks. And in general, especially for a drum groove or something, these are pretty good places to put warp markers. So when you mouse over them, it suggests, hey, would you like to put a warp marker here? And then you can quickly double click. You can also put one wherever you want. You can arbitrarily assign them too. Um, let's see. And you can do really nice things that you couldn't do before, like you know, stretch across a region of audio or drag across a region of audio and say, uh, insert warp markers, and then it drops them on all the transients that are in that section. So this makes some of the auto-warping stuff work a lot better than it used to.